But you know how we said that faith keeps you from living sensual? Because you don't always necessarily feel righteous. You don't always necessarily look in the mirror and see everything God sees. Sometimes you get flashbacks. Sometimes you just kind of get caught up in an old yesterday mood or something. That's where you have to be the steward of your life and your heart and shake yourself out of that and say, whoa, and look right back into those eyes and get it straight. You might wake up one day and just not feel like getting up and not, you might have a job and you might not feel like going to work. You, you have to shake yourself out of that. You have to be a steward of your heart and your life and say, whoa, and, and deal with your perspective and mindsets. You can't just think that, well, I'm a Christian now and if everything was right, I'm always going to have motivation and desire and love the things I do and have a right perspective because everything's lined up. No, you, you have to work out your salvation with a reverence before God and know that He is first and foremost and He is Lord. And in the face of all these counterproductive feelings, you have to be the steward of your heart. And you have to walk this thing out. Right? And if you're not looking in the mirror and seeing what the gospel says, then you have to declare that and keep looking in those eyes. And you, just, and you get to a place where those thoughts don't keep coming and those negativities get washed away. Like, I don't... I don't, I don't I don't, have to, I don't try to believe that I'm special and God loves me. And I haven't done that for a long, long time, okay? I've just been goofy. <laughs> just He loves me. I've, that's settled. That's a line I've crossed, okay? Now, I spent a lot of time talking to the guy I saw in the mirror. I spent a lot of time closing that bedroom door and walking in and opening it and talking to what looked like the air. get what I'm saying I spent a lot of time living by faith and my faith has become my reality and that's a good day I'm like not conscious of faith right now I'm not thinking faith my faith is there's there's things that I'm pursuing by faith there's things I need to see more the manifestation of the kingdom it's more of supernatural restoration recreative stuff there's stuff out there that man we're going toward in faith you get what I'm saying but there's a lot of things about my life in the foundation of Christ and all that it's just established you let your heart be established right so uh, it's established so your faith becomes your reality so you're not waking up for 20 years trying to believe God's love for you. No, you started there and all of a sudden it's just like, oh, of course he loves me. <laughs> Are you kidding? I am so loved by God, right? So faith will take you there. Now watch this. Watch this. It, it was written not just for his sake alone in verse 23, but also for us. And it shall be, what? He's talking about righteousness. It shall be imputed to us who believe. So you're already seeing righteous through, through God's eyes, through the blood of Jesus. The provision's already been made for you to be made clean and holy and pure, right? But you only wear the robe and you only manifest the benefits of what's freely given when you believe. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. If you, if you glance over at uh, Romans 5.17, just skip a stone over to 5.17. You're right there. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more. Those who receive abundance, who what? Who receive abundance of grace. Uh, let, 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 me sh let me show you, let me express to you how you receive abundance of grace. Father, I thank you, you're so towards me. I thank you today there's nothing I lack that everything necessary to mold me and shape me into Christ is in me and in my spirit you're illuminating my understanding you're even molding my emotions my disposition the eye I look through your grace is sufficient for me and what I am I am by the grace of God I say yes to you I'm created to be a son and today I'll live like a son and I thank you that I'm in the family of God that's how you receive grace you're believing, you're receiving. So you go out of your house, you haven't done anything but believe. You get it? Yeah. And you go out of your house and grace is with you. Holy Spirit is working. Because you've taken time to just dare believe and, and enter in, you get thrown into a trial. The gospel, the faith you've released and the grace that have come, comes and defends you and manifests Christ in that situation. Or we get up, we're trying to be a Christian, we're hoping today goes good, we're praying grace over our day, we go out and boom, into a trial, and then we go, ha! Ah! And we're, now we're running to the gospel. Hoping the gospel works. That's the way a lot of us have 
been trained up to live. Bump into the problem and turn to God. No, you turn to God, bump into the problem, and God defends you. The gospel's there. We don't wait till things get worse and make a matter rush to God. We wake up and make a rush to God. And when the crisis rises up, the gospel responds. Without you trying to apply the sermon that you heard. If you get thrown into a trial and you have to try to apply the sermon you just heard and become that. No, the word becomes flesh. And when you get in the trial, the word responds through your life. Because you've been in communion with God. Does this make sense? Years ago, the Lord said, Dan, I don't want you living Crossroads Christianity. I said, I don't know what that is. I've never heard anybody say that term. I was sitting on my bed. Talked to me a lot sitting on my bed. He goes, I just sitting there expecting to meet with him. So I'm either wasting my time, I'm either loco, or God's there. <laughs> and the kind of loco wasting my time is two. It's not it's one. It's not really two things. So it's either one of two things. I'm either wasting my time. Or God's there. It's that extreme. I'm banking on God's there. <laughs> so I'm going to sit there and just be there. And even if it seems like he's not there, guess what? The word says he's there. It says he sees me. He's going to reward me. It says if I seek him, he'll be there. If I draw near, he's coming. If I seek, I'll find. So I am not going to let intellectual thinking take me from that place. Yeah, but I do that, brother. I mean, I've done that, and it just didn't seem like it wasn't working for me. That's what people say. That is deception. You're living by feelings. You're subverting faith, and there's no grace over your revelation. You get it? Yeah. So I'm sitting there, he says, Crossroads Christianity, and I'm like... And I heard it real clear in my mind. I knew I'm not thinking it up, because I don't even know what Crossroads Christianity is. And I, I said, he said, Dan, he said, many, many people live in a crossroads Christianity. And I said, well, what is it? I want to know. Talk to me. He said, to where there's a fork in the road. And you have to decide which way to go. He said, I don't want you to see a fork in the road. I want you to become the Word made flesh. And there is no fork in the road, just the way. And I want you on the way. And I went, whoa. And what he was showing me is you're going to bump into plenty of adversity. You're going to bump into things along the way. You're going to bump into opposition. But if you know who you are and you become one with me, who, the, who that truth is in you, who that becomes and what that looks like will respond in every time to where there's no stop, look and listen and try to apply the last sermon you heard pertaining to this. Like what do I do now? Because the gospel will respond through you. The gospel will rise up and defend you. Your perspectives, your mindset, your responses. Why? Because you've been alone with Him. You've communed with Him. Two have become one and the Word has become flesh. Do you get this? That's what we're pursuing in communion and relationship with God. To where I don't have to... You know, I use the example when you know, you're in a car wreck and boom, you're in a car wreck. It's now it's not... If you're sitting there going... If I'm sitting there and I'm going, and I'm sitting behind that airbag going, okay, they call me Pastor Dan, New Life for Girls calls me Happy Dan. So I have to rejoice in all things. Time to be happy, brother. Time to be happy. They call me Pastor Dan. I need to walk in a manner worthy. I need to set a good example. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Hey, everybody. Is everybody okay? That's weird. That's shallow. That's surface. That's like weird. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm behind the airbag, it would really be a good thing to already know who I am and know that I'm Pastor Dan and Happy Dan and not have to think about that and not take a deep breath and try to manifest Jesus. But Jesus, how about already being in me? And let's just go with the flow. That's different than the other one, right? See, the other one, we're trying to surface this thing out and do it in the flesh. And we're biting our lip, we're hurt, we're despairing, we're angry, and we're putting on a Christian face. I don't even want those things in me because none of those things are in Him. So there has to be a place alone with Him where I get free from all that stuff, right? And that's where we're heading. This whole communion thing is going to be really fun. In fact, one of the questions pertains to that. So, so you receive, I'm at verse 17 of Romans 5, so you're not confused on this because I'm jumping around a little. Much more those who receive, receive the abundance of grace. So I just gave you a little demonstration how you receive grace. Because anytime you release faith, grace comes. You're saved by grace through 
faith. So the salvation, the saving grace of God meets faith. Okay? You release faith, grace meets you. No faith, no grace. But is it there? Is it available? Oh, saving grace of God. But grace and faith go hand in hand. They work together. So as you release your faith, even in the change of life, like this question. Let me do this question right now. This one from the Netherlands. Wilbert, hey, we're going to do your question right now. How do you let go of being so self-centered and make the transition from trying to have faith and actually live by faith? That's a good question. The on That's an excellent question, Wilbert. The only way, the only way, because if there's any other way, it's your works, your strength, and your ability to do whatever you can do, the best you can do it, and it still won't be good enough. <laughs> so that's to stop trying so hard. The only way is your communion and intimacy with God. You get alone with God and you acknowledge from your heart that, you know what, Lord, I wasn't created for me. I wasn't created to live self-centered. I wasn't created to be emotionally driven and, and live sensual and moved by every whim and everything and live by how it seems. And Father, I give myself to you. I'm a man of faith. I thank you, Father. I surrender my life to you. I'm not here to live for myself. I'm here to live for you and your great name and the world around me. And I give myself to you. And I thank you, Father, right now that your grace is so abundantly upon me. You're the one that rules and reigns in my heart. You're the one that orchestrates my emotions and redeems me from the fall of man. I am not a hurt. I am not a despairing. I am not a disappointed fella. I am full of joy, full of life, and my eye agrees with you. And I thank you that your love rules in my heart. That's how you kill self and resurrect Christ. It's in your communion. All I'm doing is releasing my desire. Because I can't make myself like God. But I can sure want to be like Him. And if you're so busy trying to be like Him in your flesh, you're going to be a discouraged, backslidden Christian and say, did that, been there, done that, tried that, didn't work for me. And then you'll have a flesh excuse to be where you're at and it's all deception. Are you following me? Okay. Because I know what I'm saying. I hope I'm not talking too fast sometimes. So, you get this? So if I'm doing that, all I'm doing is releasing my desire to Him, and that's called what? Oh my goodness, that's called what? Faith. And we're saved by grace through what? Faith. So now that I'm in faith, guess what's in the room? Faith. See, this is what makes it faith, because it's all supernatural. Follow me here. When I'm doing this, and all I'm doing is giving my desire to Him, and I'm sincere, the pure in heart shall what? Whoa! So I'm sincere. I'm giving my pure heart, my pure desire to God. I am not going, yeah, but I'm so this, but you know how I tend to be this. And I'm not, I'm not contradicting and stereotyping myself based on my former actions. I see my former actions. That's what has me in the bedroom. And I'm going, man, I've had the tendency to be this, 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 and I know what this book says, and yet I'm this, 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 and this. Right? So I take all that knowledge into the bedroom and pour out my desire this way and understand I'm qualified, I'm equipped for this in Holy Ghost, and I'm in faith, God, that you're changing and sculpting and etching my life and making me like your son. So as I'm releasing faith, guess what's in the room? Guess what's doing the work in me? I might not feel it, I might not realize it, I might not know it, but the Bible says that I'm saved by faith through grace. So if I'm in faith, guess what has to be working in my life? Oh, oh. And if you live sensual, you'll pull the plug on faith continually and stop the work of grace continually. Are you getting this? Boy, this feels really good to me right now in my spirit. This feels bubbly and happy like this is really good. <gasps> we struggled way too much yeah. but the fact that we struggled isn't a total negative thing it reveals that we do really care Amen. that's good news if you were just wanton you wouldn't struggle <laughs> so build on what's good and don't say oh just no thank God you care enough that you even have the capacity to struggle but stop struggling and get a grip on this thing it's faith and grace Amen. <laughs> you get it 
So you can even build on the struggle. Thank God you have the capacity to struggle. It means there's a good root in you of, of sincerity and purity. You care enough to struggle. <laughs> See, but we're so negative and detrimental. And we, oh, I'm just, well, I'm struggling. See, I'm a mess. I don't even know if I'm saved. The fact that you can even act like that means there's something down inside of you crying out that wants change. Yay! It doesn't mean you're a throwaway in a basket case. It means you care. God can work with that. Oh, He can. If He, if he sent His Son while we were yet sinners, I bet He's not threatened by your struggle. <laughs> Why you, when you didn't even care when you were deceived and lost in yourself he had the ability to see beyond that now that you do care he's, I'm sure he's bigger than your struggle <laughs> you guys good? I'm good I promise watch this the abundance of grace how much grace? abundance oh. <laughs> abundance it's more than even enough. It's more than necessary, probably. Oops, I knocked my little ear thing off. Hang on. Grace, come on my little ear thing. Okay, so you have to receive what? The abundance of grace. So you have to believe that God is towards you. That God loves you. That God wants to get His hands on you and fashion you and mold you and make a masterpiece. Here's how I always pictured myself going to the bedroom, and I don't know if I've ever really personally shared this, because some of this stuff's intimate, but it seemed like in the last school I shared some intimate stuff and stuff I've never shared for the pulpit. But I always, and this isn't arrogant and presumptuous, and I've always been cautious to share it because people aren't ready to hear certain things and they'll hear it wrong. But I think you guys can get this, but I used to go in and picture myself under a tarp. And I would see God as like the master craftsman potter and the bedroom was where he worked secretly and and I would get this picture of one day him opening up the door and this light shining out and him taking the tarp as the master craftsman and potter and just poof, ta -da! <laughs> just me under that tarp ah, shining in the light of his glory <laughs> now that was that was on purpose a vision of mine going into the bedroom <laughs> So that's out of the bag now. So, so I'm out from under the tarp now. <laughs> but, but see, is that presumptuous? Is that arrogant? That's sure better than beating yourself up, talking yourself down, only seeing the worst in your life, and da 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 da, and then trying to get surface value and, and, and this kind of esteem and get somebody to just say something nice so you can go, ooh. Right? That's the rat race we talked about. No, you get a vision of what God's doing and you see your potential and you realize that even though you don't see what it is yet you're becoming, you know it's going to look like Him. And I would go in the bedroom actually with a picture and I would just realize that He's working on me. I'm a masterpiece of God. And in that secret place is where He does His finest work. And nobody realizes and sees the skill of His hand and the touch of his heart and his vision. But one day, whoosh. Oh. <laughs> see, see, I'm either or I'm right. <laughs> see how extreme the gospel is? I'm either way off right now, like way off and need help, or I'm right. <laughs> I'm banking on right. Time will tell. Time will tell. Much more those who receive. You've got to receive the abundance of grace. And the gift. The gift. What is it? Gift. Whew. Man. Okay. It's a gift. You have to open up a gift. <laughs> yeah. Is that what the message says? Wildly extravagant. 